Hi boys and girls! Welcome back to Storytime with Miss Felicia. I'm Miss Felicia and I am so excited to have you here for another Storytime adventure. This week we are going to be reading a story about the first human computer or one of the first human computers. Her name was Dorothy Vaughn. Yeah, I said her name. Dorothy Vaughn is a human computer. Not like the computers we have nowadays that run on electricity and have storage and memory. No, she wasn't like that. She was just a girl, just like me and just like maybe you, or she was just a human, just like one of you guys. And she was very good at doing math problems. She could do math problems super quick. And that's how she got to work with a special company and help send the first man to space. So let's dive in and see what this story is about and how this girl, Dorothy Vaughn, became a human computer. Computer decoder. Dorothy Vaughn, computer scientist. Dorothy knew numbers made sense. They lined up just right for engineering events. What didn't make sense and made people suffer was how people were dividing according to color. She didn't let that stop her from being the best, from rising to the top and helping the rest. And when she saw what the new computer could do, she dove into learning how it could help you. This is Dorothy. Can everybody say hi, Dorothy? Dorothy Vaughn was a computer during the 1940s and 1950s, but she wasn't a computer like the computers you might see at school. Dorothy was a human computer. Have you guys ever seen a human computer? I've never seen a human computer, but before there were computers with screens People had to crunch all these numbers and do the calculations and factor important things so that we can have the correct information to use. And so that is what Dorothy did. She could do math very quickly and she always figured out the right answer, even if it took a while. Numbers made sense to Dorothy. Who here likes math? You like math? That's awesome. Maybe you can be a human computer too, or a mathematician, or a scientist. In school, she studied very hard and went to college. Back then, it was unusual for a woman to go to college. It was even more unusual for an African-American woman to go to college. After college, Dorothy became a math teacher. Numbers still made sense to Dorothy, but she was allowed to teach only African-American children. So during the time when Dorothy was going to college, it was very rare that people that looked like her, African-American women or men could go to college. And also when she became a teacher, she could only teach little boys and girls that looked like her. She didn't earn much money as a teacher. She worried about sending her own children to college Dorothy looked for a new job that paid more money. One day, she spotted a notice on a bulletin board. The Langley Memorial Aeronautical Laboratory was hiring human computers. Dorothy applied and got the job. Do you guys know what an aeronautical laboratory is? Well, aeronautical is 
about air and space. So let's find out. Maybe we'll find out some more information about what an aeronautical laboratory is. This was in 1943, during World War II. So many people worked at Langley. This was where engineers tested new airplanes. See, air, air planes are aeronautical machines because they go through the air. They figured out how to make the airplanes better at taking off, flying, and landing. The engineers needed people good at math to help them. These people were the human computers. So you see that airplane? In order to make it fly, you have to calculate important numbers to make sure that it's going the right way, that it's the right weight, size, speed, all those things. I don't know much about aeronautical. Most of the human computers were women and most of the engineers were men. Wow, did you know that? Most of the human computers were women. How many girls do we have here? So you can be a human computer too. If you're really good at math, you can crunch all those numbers and do the calculations super fast and help some important scientific project happen. Dorothy loved working as a human computer. She loved working on solutions to problems. When World War II ended, the engineers at Langley went to work figuring out how to send people into space. Dorothy was excited to be a part of the team. So now, the people at Langley want to send people to outer space. At Langley, the numbers made sense, but there was one thing that didn't make sense. Segregation. Does anybody know what segregation is? Segregation is when we are separated because of the color of our skin or race. People who are African American that look like Miss Felicia or have her skin tone, in this time of segregation, they weren't treated equally to people who had different skin tones like Peach. So, this didn't make sense to Dorothy. Segregation was when black people and white people were forced to stay apart. So, only people who were white could go here, and only people who were black or colored, as they used to call them, which is brown skin, could go to this part of the movie theater, up in the back. At Langley, segregation was the rule. Black people and white people were made to work in different areas. African American women were on one team of computers and white women were on another team. So we're all, they were all working for the same goal, to help in the war and to get people to outer space. But just because their skin colors were different they weren't allowed to work near each other or work on the same tables. See, they had different tables and they weren't allowed to have the same equipment all because they look different than each other, which doesn't make any sense, right? If we're all people, we all should be able to work together because we all are smart. They're all computers and they're all trying to get to the same goal. Dorothy didn't let this stop her. She worked hard. She worked smart. She became the first African-American supervisor at Langley. Dorothy spoke up for equal rights for all people, whether they were black or white. That made sense to her. Langley stopped segregating people when the company became NASA 
in 1958. So see, there's Dorothy. She's fighting for equality. She's fighting to make sure that everybody in Langley, in the laboratory, were treated the same. And they all had the same work equipment and same opportunities. One day, Dorothy felt a strange vibration in the floorboards at Langley. Earthquake? Giant truck? No. The shaking was caused by a computer. Not a human computer, an electronic computer. Oh, so she got to experience the first electronic computer. The electronic computer worked much faster than a human. How can I work with this machine? Dorothy asked herself. So, do you think that Dorothy might be afraid that she won't have a job anymore and all the other human computers might not have a job anymore if there are electronic computers? I think so. That makes sense. Because if you have an electronic computer, why do you need human computers? Dorothy decided to learn something new. This made sense to her. She went to classes and read books about computers and programming. Dorothy became an expert at writing computer code. She helped the other human computers learn computer code too. So she helped them understand how to use the electronic computers so that they can use it and still have work. Wasn't that very smart of her? The work Dorothy did with computers helped send a man into space. Dorothy never stopped learning, even when she was a very old woman. This just made sense to Dorothy. So Dorothy never stopped learning and growing. The end. Did you guys enjoy that story? I really liked learning about Dorothy and the changes that she made and how she stood up for herself and for her other co-workers so that they wouldn't be separated anymore because of the color of their skin. If they're all smart and they're all working towards one goal, why should it matter what you look like? We should all be able to work together, right? Because we're all doing the same thing and we all have the same intention and the same goal. Well, boys and girls, I am so happy that you were able to join us for another story time adventure. And parents, if you and your little one love story time, please don't forget, subscribe below, okay? Hit the subscribe button. You'll get first time notifications. And as we grow, we will have more things like activities and fun craft ideas that we'll share right here on YouTube. So until next week, bye boys and girls.